Hello and welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tastytutes.com. Today I will be demonstrating how to create a portrait in the style of Julian Opie in Adobe Illustrator. You may recognize this style from the cover of the Blur Greatest Hits album cover and there's a link in the description with the reference for you to see this. As you can see here this illustration was created from this image here to the left. This is a good friend of mine, and he was kind enough to donate this picture for me for this tutorial. In this tutorial, we will be covering a few steps from tracing an image to creating your own custom brush. So, before I start, I just want to quickly cover the illustration file so you know exactly what we will be creating. To create an illustration like this in Adobe Illustrator, it's going to be really handy to have your layers panel open, to have your stroke panel open and your brushes panel open. Let's take a quick look at the layers and as you can see we, ha we have a few layers here and I've created the illustration in this way because it makes it a lot easier to manage. For example, you've got the clothes on one layer, the face on one layer, the features, the hair and the highlights. So this is going to make it a lot easier to manage and to create. Over here we have our brushes and if I double click, double click on a custom brush here, this is a brush which I have made and I will demonstrate how to do that. And the reason I've made this brush is it makes it really nice on the highlights so you get a nice tail off uh, at the end of the stroke which you don't normally get on the default brushes in Illustrator. So with that said, let's make a start. So I'm going to come to File New and create a new canvas. Let's just go with A4 Portrait for now. OK, and I'm just going to quickly come and grab my photograph, uh, the one I'm about to trace. And as you can see here, I've grabbed some colors, color references from the image, which I will be using. So I'm just going to grab all of that. Command C to copy. And let's come into our new canvas and press Command V to paste. I'm just going to move them over into the pasteboard for now. But I'm going to grab my picture and just position it in the center of the canvas ready to trace. I'm going to come over to my layers panel and just double click on that and just call it image to trace. Make it nice and clear for me. And I'm going to set the transparency to around 50% because that will mean I'll be able to trace it and the picture won't interfere too much. So come back to my layers. I'm just going to lock that layer. I'm going to come to new layer and call this face. And I'm going to start by tracing the shape or outline of the face. So press Z, the hotkey for zoom. I'm just going to zoom into the face here. And I'm going to come over to my menu and grab the pen tool. Now, there's a lot of ways you can trace or draw an object in Illustrator, but my preferred technique is the following. I'm just going to start clicking around the face, clicking on the points, on the curves, where I know where the curves are going to be. I'm just going to come up and just join that off. And by the looks of it, by default, it's made a white shape. I'm just going to change the stroke to black. Let's bring up my swatches here. Change the stroke to black and the fill to nothing. And as you can see, we've got a outline with some hard edges. Now I'm going to grab my pen, click and hold on the pen tool and come down to the convert anchor point tool. And what I find really handy is the fact that I can tweak the, the curves on, on the nodes here. And I find this the most easiest way to, to do this sort of um, tracing because you can't always, you're always fighting with the curves sometimes. But anyway, so I'm just going to add some curvature to the face here. And when I'm happy with that, I think I'm going to come over to my menu, click and hold on the pen tool, grab my pen. I'm going to do the same for the ears. And again, I'm just going to click and hold on each node just to add the nice smooth curves to each node. And then I should have something that looks like this. 
If I press Command-0, I can fit this to the canvas, get a better look at it. And that's looking just fine for now. I'm just going to quickly add the next section. Yeah, and I forgot to mention earlier on that when you do use the Convert Anchor Point tool and you click and drag on the node, you can also click on the Anchor Point tool and further customize those. So now we have our outlines of our face. We are ready to move on and do the hair. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to my Layers panel. It's going to create a new layer and call this Hair. And to make it nice and easy, I'm just going to toggle the visibility of the face so I can concentrate on the hair. So let's zoom right in, get a close look at the hair, pressing Z, the shortcut key. And I'm going to come again over to my pen tool. I'm just going to start clicking as I did when I traced the face. And there you go, we've just traced the hair, just like we did before. And again, if I come over to my pen tool, click and hold, and grab the Convert Anchor Point tool, I can add all the curved curvature to each node. And before long, you'll end up with an outline of the hair. Now, this isn't final. This is just a quick output. We can zoom in and we'll, we can refine the points later. But for now, this will do. And now I'm happy with the hair. I'm going to start doing the facial features. So like before, I'm going to come over. But this time, I'm going to click on face. I'm not going to click on hair. I'm going to click on face because I want to create a new layer above face. New layer. Let's call this features. Okay, and let's toggle the visibility of the hair so we can get rid of that. Press Z for the, the hotcut key for zoom. I'm just going to move in onto the eyes here. The first thing I'm going to do is come over to my ellipse tool. And I'm just going to draw a circle here. And by pressing shift, I can create a circle which is exactly to scale. And let's swap the stroke to fill. And that will do just fine. And if I press and hold Alt and click, I can drag and immediately copy that layer. Now that's the, those are the eyeballs there. And I'm just going to quickly use the pen tool to draw the eyebrows. And again, I'm going to click and hold on the pen tool, grab my convert anchor point tool and just add all the curved data to that. And when you're happy with your eyebrow stroke shape, it's a simple case of changing the stroke to fill. And you can copy the eyebrow by pressing Command C and then pasting it by Command V. So you've got two eyebrows. And if we come up to Object, Transform, Reflect, make sure it's vertical and 90 degrees, click OK. We can just move that other eyebrow in place reposition, zoom out a little bit, reposition and there are there is our eyes and eyebrows. Next we need to come to the no section pressing Z for the shortcut key for zoom. I'm just going to click and hold and drag into the nose there. Again I'm going to use my pen tool and I'm just going to draw where I believe the area is for the, the nose. And if I just zoom out, I think that might just do it for now. I can move these into place, but I'll address that later on. And then we're going to come over to the mouth. And what's quite iconic about the Julian Opie style mouth is that he keeps it very simple and it's just a line. So I'm going to draw a line with my pen tool. I'm going to change that fill to a stroke, 
and I'm going to try to add some curves to this. And by pressing A, I can select my direct selection tool and just move these nodes around a little bit if I think they're a bit too harsh. And then again, I'm going to grab my pen tool and draw a line under the lip there. Grab my convert anchor point tool and just add a nice curve. And we're beginning to get somewhere. Even though it's looking a little bit silly right now, soon it will start looking proper good. Right, so what we're going to do is we're going to bring back our layers that we toggled the visibility on earlier on. Let's bring back the hair and let's bring back the face. And let's zoom in a little bit. A little bit. And if I select the hair, I'm going to come down and change the stroke to fill. And if I come down to the face, I'm going to select the face. And I'm going to come over to my colors, which I sourced earlier on. And I'm just going to grab the color picker from the menu. Make sure that the face is selected. We've got a black stroke. I'm just going to grab the color picker and select that pink. And what it's done is, you can see already, it's filled that in, but the stroke has disappeared. So I'm going to add a black stroke to our face. Add a black stroke. There you go. I'm going to click on my strokes panel and push that up to about seven. Let's try seven for now. That's looking good. And if I click on the next section, I can use my color picker. And if I select the face, it will copy all the characteristics of that shape and since I drew that after the face it's on the top so if I select the object right click and come down to arrange center back that's gone behind the face there and I'm going to do the same with the ears I'm going to click the left ear by holding shift I can select the right ear as well and use our color picker select the face and it will apply those values to the ears. By right clicking, I can arrange and center back. And there we have our face. And it's all starting to come together. So next, I'm going to pay attention to the lips down here. And I'm going to want to add the thickness to these also. So if I click on the top lip, by pressing shift, I can select the lip underneath as well. And I'm going to come to my stroke panel and push this up to about seven. And if we click off those, we can see that there's these horrible edges on the ends of our strokes there. This is easily changed. Again, by clicking and holding shift, I can select them both. And if we look closely in our strokes panel, you can see that the cap, if we look at the cap, the cap is currently selected on butt cap by selecting round cap. I'm going to click off and you can see that now there's some nice rounded edges. But I'm not entirely happy with that, so I'm going to grab my direct selection tool and click on the line. I'm just going to move these nodes a little bit because I'm thinking this is a bit these are these lines are a bit too big. And let's go with that for now. Now, before I move on to the next step, I just want to tidy up our features and our face here, because as you can see, there's a anomaly there. So if I just zoom in, I'm going to press A to grab my direct selection tool. And if I click on the line of the face, I can move this up and push that out of the way. There you go. So that's now complete. And I'm going to add a little light shine to the eyes here because in the Julian OP illustrations, there's normally a little white dot on the eye. I'm going to grab my ellipse, and making sure I'm on the features layer, I'm going to draw a little circle, and I'm going to change this to white, and that's looking pretty big, that's because it's set to the stroke, so I'm going to swap the stroke and fill, and just click on the stroke and get rid of that, so we're just left with the white fill, and by pressing Alt, by pressing Alt and clicking and dragging, I'm going to copy that white circle. Let's zoom out a little bit. And that is looking pretty good.